What's different? It's just that there's a hole. Okay, so it's the same setup, but there's a gap between your region and your axis. Because of there, the fact that there's this gap, there'll be an outer radius and an inner radius. And it'll be our job to be able to find what the outer radius is and find what the inner radius is. It helps to see a picture. So, so I have this, this picture here of this region that I want to rotate about some horizontal axis to find out what the what the area of the wash, just think about it like this basically. If you can get the area of the outer disc and take out the hole in the middle, the area of the inner disc, then that's the area of the washer. So you're going to need the inner radius and the outer radius. And that's all washer is. Washer is like disc minus disc. Outer disc minus inner disc. That's how, that's how I like to think about washer. It's not different, it's just a takeoff of it. Okay, so there's, a, there's an outer disc, and you're going to subtract the inner disc. You know, the volume, of the, the volume of the outer disc minus the volume of the inner disc. Essentially, that's what's going on there. It gives you uh, this, this donut region, this annular region, this washer region. Okay. So it's not new. It's disc minus disc. Really think about it just like that. Okay. The difference being now we have a gap. <coughs> when we go to take our region and we look at the axis, there's a discernible gap between our region and axis. That's what allows this circle region to have to come out. This di the inner disc has to come out. Remember now, you're only going to be given the words. It's going to be up to you to get the picture. It's the same picture as before though, right? Um, 4 minus x squared. This time though, the axis is not the x-axis. This time the axis is the line y equals negative 2. We're going to rotate about that. So same picture, but but it's not going to be a disc. There's a discernible gap between your region and the axis that you're rotating about. With this discernible gap, there'll be an inner disc that you can take out. Okay. What we need is the outer radius and the inner radius. Here's how we go find them. When you, when you want to find the outer radius, we go from your axis of rotation and go all the way through the region to the, to the end of it. So this distance, represented by the red line there, is the outer radius. That's going to take me to the outside disk. The outer radius is found by drawing a line that goes from the axis all the way through your region. The inner radius is going to be found by drawing a line that goes all the way from the axis up to your region, up to the edge of your region, the first edge of your region. In this case, what's this going to be for us? Let's think about this. Remember how we have this x-axis, right? The distance up from the x-axis, remember how we said that's a y distance? The distance up from the x-axis, distance up from the x-axis, that's the y distance. And we need to add to that. We need to add to that something. We add to that a distance of 2. So y plus 2, but we can't leave it as y because what's going to happen is this thing is going to be moved horizontally and so we need it in terms of x. So instead of saying um, 2 plus y, we say 2 plus 4 minus x squared. You give me an x, that'll be how long that line is as I move. From negative 2 all the way through to positive 2. That's how long that line is. That's my outer radius. The inner radius is just 2. I go up to the region, the pink distance in this picture. The inner radius is just 2. 
Um, simplifying the outer radius, the 2 and the 4 get added to give you a 6. And so the inner radius is 2. And we, the key is we don't subtract them, though. Remember the formula. It's like you go get the volume with the outer, and you subtract the volume with the inner. There's a squaring that happens first. We need to square first. Don't subtract, and then later try to square. That's different than squaring first and then subtracting. That's what we need to do here. Square first, find this outer volume, and subtract the inner volume, essentially. If you want to rewrite this, think about this as pi times the outer radius squared minus pi times the inner radius squared. Think about it as an outer volume minus an inner volume, if that helps. In the formula, you square first. Be careful. Don't subtract. Square first. OK. So for us, we square first. Square this guy, square this guy. We take 6 minus x squared, and we square. We take 2, and we square. Our volume is found by integrating pi times that. And then once again, we move this horizontally from a low end of negative 2 to a high end of positive 2. And technically, there's a dx on the end there. Sorry. All right. Uh, you know, work out that on your own. Um, yeah, I guess we're still in kind of review mode. Let's go ahead and work it out. So 6 minus x squared quantity squared. That's 36 minus 12x squared plus x to the fourth. And from that, you need to take away 4. So we're talking about 32 minus 12x squared plus x to the fourth. Once again, notice that it's not about the coefficients. It's not about these twos. It's about the fact that all the exponents are even, and the fact that you're going from minus a to a. Those could have been odd numbers. And so we can double going from 0 to 2. So we get 32x minus, um, I think it's 4x cubed after simplifying and then x to the fifth over 5. And then we times that all by 2 pi. Because it's 12x to the 3 over 3 this year. 12x to the 3 over 3 and the 12 and 3 we give, you, give you a 4. Uh, yeah, and you get something. Well, um, something, I don't know. 64 minus, um, I don't know. 30, uh, 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 32 plus 32 over 5 with a 2 pi on the outside. You see where we're going with this. I'll let you finish that out. The point is the setup. Okay, This part at the end, I, I mean, I want you to be able to get it right. You know, get full 10 credit, 10, 10 points credit, but I don't want to spend our time in class on this little part at the end. Is that okay? My advice, factor out 32. In fact, I don't know, just call this 32. Okay, finish that out on your own. Let me just tell you what the answer is. Uh, the answer is 384 pi over 5. Okay. These could also be sideways in terms of y, right? The one we did was in terms of x because the axis is horizontal. So remember now, with both disk and washer, you know, disk and washer just a special kind of disk. With, with disk and washer, the, the, the thing we're integrating is perpendicular to our axis that we're rotating with. 
So when you have this horizontal axis, then we're integrating this vertical thing, moving it horizontally. And then um, if it's the other way around, we'll be taking this horizontal and moving it vertically. Okay, let's work out one more example. Uh, once again, the picture's not going to be there. Okay, picture's not going to be there. So, all you'll be given it's just the words. <coughs> Calculate the volume of the solid generated by rotating the region between the curves y equals x over 2 and y equals root x. Okay, so I take away the nice picture so I can show you how to draw that yourself. And we're going to rotate this about the y-axis. Okay. Y equals root x. You got to know that that looks like that, pretty much. Okay. Now y equals x over 2 is a line. Right? With the slope of a half. Go up 1 and over 2. Now where that, where that is at could be debatable about whether you draw the line up here or up here. That's a, a, a um, the slope of it is you know not steep at all. I mean not steep is a normal like y equals x comes out like this. Y equals two x would be more steep. So y equals half of x is less steep. It comes down and intersects down here. So um, we don't know anything about the intersection though. We just know that it probably looks like this. We don't know where they intersect. When x is zero, they definitely intersect. We can, we can agree on that much. We have no idea. This is a mystery to us. This other place they intersect at. It would be nice if it was x equals 1. It's not, though. Right? y equals a half and y equals root of 1, they aren't the same. We have to do some algebra. In, in the beginning, we didn't even... First, there's a picture. A little bit of geometry, right? And then, then there's algebra. We have to find out where these intersect at. Before we even start worrying about where it rotates about, where does x over 2 equal root x? That's our task at hand. Suggestions. Yeah. And, and so if you, don't, if you aren't intuitive, you're, if you're not able to guess and, and get it, here's how you would go about doing that. Square both sides. You get x squared over 4 is equal to x, or that x squared is 4x. And so, if you are, maybe it won't be an integer value. Maybe guessing and checking won't work. So, this algebra might be necessary. And we're going to find out that you don't want to divide by x, you want to set it equal to 0 and factor out an x, basically. So, yes, it's x equals 0, and the other place is x equals 4. Four. Turns out that that wasn't a mystery. We were able to solve the mystery and figure that it was x equals four, the other place where they intersect at. All right, great. All this is like pre-calculus stuff so far. Now, what's our axis of rotation? It's the y-axis. So we need to go and see and recognize that there's a you know there's a discernible gap between our region and the axis. Okay, there's definitely a gap there. And it's our job to figure out basically the outer disk minus the inner disk. There's an outer radius which takes me all the way through to the line. Call that um, outer radius capital R. And there's an inner radius which takes me up to the curve. I don't know, call that lowercase r. This is my outer radius. that I'm calling capital R and my inner radius I'm calling lowercase r. Okay. And just keep in mind distance off 
of the y-axis is exactly x. Okay. So I have y equals x over 2, and I have y equals root x. I need x. So x is equal to twice y, and x is equal to y squared. Now I have x. This one is associated with capital R. This one is associated with lowercase r. The line is the outer radius. The curve is the inner radius. Don't subtract them first. Remember, you have to square them first. Your volume is found by taking pi times the outer radius squared minus the inner radius squared. In this case, dy. So we square the, the outer radius, 2y. We square the inner radius, y squared. And then we subtract. What? To get the bounds, you have to get the picture. You have to look at the picture and know that as you move this thing upwards, there's a low bound of zero. But what about the upper? Where is it at, at the max? It comes from being able to visualize, you know, seeing this, this disk moving upwards. The upper bound is this. When x is 4, the y value is... When x is 4, in either one of these, the y value is 2. So there's your upper bound. To figure out the bounds, it's very necessary to get a good picture. So 0 to 2. So we find that we go from 0 to 2, 4y squared minus y fourth. Uh, you, know, you finish it out a little bit. It's like 4y cubed over 3 minus y fifth over 5 and put a 2 in. Thirty-two again. Thirty-two over three minus thirty-two over five. So pull out a thirty-two and take a third minus a fifth. Two fifteenths. So. 64 pi over 15 is the final answer. Okay? That part is only worth one point. Um, this integration is maybe worth two points. Maybe I should give you like eight points from going through all this picture algebra and calculus of, of setting it up. If I was splitting that up, maybe, maybe I'd do it that way. And so uh, final answer is uh, 64 pi over 15. Whatever units we have squared. I just want you to emphasize that it's volume by, by, by putting units cubed. So I said squared, I meant cubed. It's a volume that we're finding. OK, so that's, you know, that's it written, written all the way out. Um, I think the way I have it typed up might be slightly different, but the idea is the same. Um, let, me not, let me discard this and then just yeah, show you this. Oh, I took the pictures away, I'm sorry. Okay. So, um, yeah, you end up with the same. 64 pi over 15. Okay, so remember, first part was cross sections. The second part was disk. And washer is just disk minus disk. That's what I want you to think about it as. Okay, next class we'll do shell, which is a totally different technique. has nothing to do with slicing, but it's another way to get volume by revolving. Let's end for today.